everyone. In this YouTube video, we're going to annoy a lot of people. In fact, we're going to pee a lot of people off. So we might have to close the comments because people are going to get angry with this one. And other people might find it funny. We often talk about the best areas that you should invest in. But you know what? There are five areas we would never invest in. And we're about to give you that list. Right, Rob, let's start off our tour of offending people with Somerset. So Somerset, yes, looks lovely, idyllic, and I'm sure it's a wonderful place to live, but it's very rural. The largest place in Somerset is Bath, or Bath, as you Southerners like to say, and the, the population there is less than 100,000. So it gives you sort of a marker for the rest of Somerset, which by landmass is a decent sized area. Population levels are not high. It's expensive. Average price of a property is 320,000 and the yields are really poor because rents are so low. Transport links are not great either. Yeah, to some areas it's okay and you've got the M5 running through, but lots of it is difficult to access to getting to other major cities and therefore employment. So Somerset, I'm sure it's a lovely place to visit, but as far as property investment goes, it's one that we'll avoid. Another place that we'll be avoiding is Haverhill. Where is Haverhill, I hear you ask? The mayor of Haverhill's just spat out his tea, Rob. Well, Mr. Mayor, don't worry, I will bring everyone up to date. Haverhill is a market town 14 miles southeast of Cambridge. So it's very near to Cambridge, but actually it's worlds away. With that kind of location and distance from a, a major city with lots of employment and things going on like Cambridge, you'd expect that it might be a popular commuter town. But the reason we would not invest there is the complete absence of transport links. If you look at it on a map, there is no motorway anywhere near. There's there's no train station. It's actually one of the largest towns in England without its own train station. So to get to Cambridge, you have to get a bus and the traffic apparently is terrible because there's no motorway and then get a train from somewhere else, which means that no one's going to do it. Now, of course, people still live in Haverhill. It's possible to rent out property there and some people will be doing well from doing that. But because of its lack of fundamentals, its lack of transport links, it's just not going to have major capital growth in the same way as other cities. It's not going to benefit from the ripple effect that we so often talk about. As a result, while it is going to be possible to make decent investments there, it's unlikely to ever really take off as an area and that is why we're steering clear. An area you might have heard of, but chances are you've probably never been to, is Barrow, or to call it by its full title, Barrow and Furnace. And the reason you've never been is because it's miles away from everything. Look at it on a map, nowhere is close. Even Lancaster, which isn't a major city, is still some distance away. And with it being so remote, of course then, why would you visit? Well, people obviously do visit and choose to live there. And that is probably driven by the major employer, BAE Systems. So you might be saying, well, wait a minute, they've got a major employer there. And that is a major employer. But if that major employer ever disappears, then the town is in trouble. And the town is economically challenged already. Rents are very, very low. So property prices are low, but so are rents. So a combination of it being low rents, low capital growth prospects, poor transport links, and being in the middle of nowhere means that Barrow is definitely on our list of places we will not invest. Next up, a controversial one, and one that's probably going to offend more people than any other on this list. That's right, we would not invest in Brighton. Now, of course, people have invested in Brighton in the past and done extremely well because it's had a lot of growth. And Brighton, of course, is a very popular place to visit. Therefore, holiday lets have done very well in Brighton. But I personally wouldn't invest in Brighton today because I believe it's now overpriced for what it is. It's had a huge amount of growth, but I believe that other similar areas offer far better value. The appeal of Brighton is obvious. It's a seaside resort and it's commutable to London. But there are plenty of other seaside towns that are commutable to London that, in my opinion, are actually nicer and which you can buy into at a far better price. Camber Sands is one example. The Kent Coast is another. They might not be quite as quick into London, but it's certainly doable. You've still got the sea and the prices are so much better. So while I wouldn't rule out getting down there for a stick of rock and some fish and chips, I'm not going to be investing in Brighton. It seems so far we've been picking on England. So let's go north of the border to Scotland. And there's possibly more than one place in Scotland that we wouldn't invest in. But we're going to pick on Aberdeen. Now Aberdeen has done, in the past, very well. But that's when oil has done very well. Yes, Aberdeen is famous for its oil industry and all the employment opportunities that are linked to that. 
But when oil doesn't perform as strongly as a commodity, which it hasn't done recently, Aberdeen suffers and Aberdeen has been one of the poorest performing property cities in the UK for a few years now. And that is really just because oil has done poorly. So any area of the UK that is so sensitive to a commodity price movement makes it really risky to invest in. If oil does well, then you'll do well. But if oil crashes, so could your property prices. Also, Aberdeen is really far away from anywhere. Again, if you look at it on a map, it's miles out. The journey between Aberdeen and Edinburgh on a train is two and a half hours. That's quite a journey to get to your nearest major city. Okay, Rob, I'm going to try and do a bit of damage control now before we end this video. I know we picked on specific places, but offending people is not the point of this video. The point is to draw out some themes. Forget about the places and look at the reasons that we said we wouldn't invest in these places. We've talked about places with poor transport links that are quite isolated. We've talked about lack of fundamentals. We've talked about over-reliance on a major employer. We've talked about being overpriced and relative value. And we've talked about low rents. These are the reasons that we would avoid these areas and others like them. And the flip of that is if you can find areas that have those characteristics, they're likely to be good investment locations. And just one more caveat, there are, of course, people successfully investing in all the places that we've talked about, and indeed, everywhere else in the UK. I actually know people who are doing very successful investments in the majority of the places we've talked about today. Rob and I are just talking about ourselves and our strategy. Everyone has different goals. Everyone has a different approach to property investment. So the areas that you would and wouldn't invest in completely depend on your strategy. That is why getting clear on your strategy and what you want out of property is so, so important before you go looking for anywhere to invest or not to invest.